premiere show in Anaheim and uh, we thought we'd come on my page and uh, do some of the stuff that I did, um, a shape that I've been liking lately. Um, it's the, along the lines of the pixie shag kind of combination, pixie mullet, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I've got an already kind of existed layered kind of shape. It's about this long. So what I've done is I've actually just sectioned at the lower parietal ridge all the way around and then from apex down to behind the ear on both sides. And then what I'm doing is I'm just leaving this underneath out for now. And I'm going to work through this top area and with the top area, I'm just going to pivot my sections cleanly all the way from front to back on both sides. And I'm going to work the interior first and then I'll work to the exterior. What happens if I do this is I have the luxury of doing what I want with this afterwards. So I'm kind of working smart and not harder here. The length will be the last thing that I do and probably we might keep most of what we already have. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass you on to Kelly. She's got some sectioning going on. So I'm going to work on a mullet. And how I sectioned this off was um, using my comb to find the round of the head for the bang section. And then I brought that down into right above the ear here, making this V. And then again, using my comb to find the flat of the head here and then bringing that down into that same point. So I have these sections that are gonna follow the head shape and then we're gonna be leaving this out with a disconnection. I want something really exaggerated today. I'm feeling a little more on the creative side this morning. So I want like a really nice gnarly mullet. So this is gonna be really, really nice and tight following the head shape throughout here. Really short bangs and maybe some little sideburns in here, but we'll see how it goes as I'm going through and seeing how the hair is laying. The doll head's hair tends to pop out at the roots a little bit more than what I can do on a human. So um, I just really wanna do an exaggerated shape today. So I'm gonna start with the fringe and I'm gonna go pretty short, but also working with the bend of the hair as I'm coming through here. So pulling this out and seeing where that bend starts, which is here. So that's where I'm gonna start. I want a really, really short bangs and something that sits nice and flat. So check. So that bevels just really nicely around that, that forehead there. I'm gonna pull these sections into the center and then work on a little bit of face framing here. So I'm just starting. What I've done is I've taken my first section. So the idea is to pivot from this point right here in the center all the way through, so radial sections. What that's going to do for me, if I don't use any over direction, it's going to make a really clean circular shape which follows the head shape around. If I over direct, then I'm going to see that descending to the back. So again, it's, it's, it's whatever you want to do. The first thing I'm doing here is just finding the length that I want. So I'm using um, these Joel scissors. These are from Hair Art. And they're kind of, I think, the official Joel carrier here in the US. And uh, I have the five inch cobalts, which are actually a very classic pair of scissors. Back when I first started doing hair, my dad gave me his scissors to use, and they were these, but they weren't the black, they were just the silver pair. So it's really nice to feel these again and use them. I'm a, a second generation hairdresser. So I've always been around quality tools. So I'm going to work with that length to start with. Afterwards, I might take this a little bit shorter in that fringe area. And so what I'm doing is just going to pivot out from that section and use the previous as the guide, but don't over direct. And if you notice now, that section has kind of come over here. So it's kind of tick-tocking around the head shape. It's just like a clock in a sense, right? So each movement I'm making is like five minutes of time. So I've got to make sure that I follow this haircut. So what I'm going to do is my fingers obviously are going to be parallel to my section angle, but also my shoulders are going to be like that too, so that I don't twist the hair. Get the comb nice and clean down into the roots and move up to my fingers and the cutting line. So working that through. And I'm just going to take this all the way around the head shape. 
So if you notice what I'm doing is I'm actually copying the contour of the head shape from the apex down to the hairline. And that first section will be the elevation that I use all the way through. I won't be cutting down even further and lower. So this piece here is very important because that's what I maintain all the way through. Whether I'm out here or whether I'm down here. This is obviously a technique you could use on longer hair. If I work on longer hair, I'm going to get more of a face frame. So definitely versatile. And that's one of the things I'm really enjoying lately with um, haircuts that I'm teaching in. I like to teach haircuts that are versatile with different lengths. So you, you literally can use a similar sectioning, sectioning pattern and do many different haircuts. Okay, so as I'm coming through here, I'm just kind of visualizing where I want to go with this haircut. I, want, I know I want this to be nice and like head hugging. So as I'm coming through, I'm kind of liking this flat compared to this head shape. So I think I'm gonna lay, leave these pieces for last. But what I did is that, that center section here and I brought that forward and I cut that off flat here. And then I took two like diagonal sections here, just right at that little corner of the, um, of the fringe of that triangle and over directed that into the center and brought that down flat just so this could expand out a little bit further. And then as I was um, looking at the hair as it's laying down here, I really wanted to open up that cheekbone area so we can really see into the eyebrow. So I went in and did a little bit of, um, created a bit of a peak in this corner, taking that corner out here to remove some of that weight so that this can have that little place to sit kind of off to the side here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do here now is just do weight removal. I'm liking this disconnection with these flats, but I do wanna have a lot more of a visual blend as this is laying flat here. So I'm just gonna be holding these sections out and taking out really, really big sections with the, with the razor, but working still with that bend of the hair is where I wanna start with my texturizing and weight removal. So kind of creating these pockets for the hair to kind of sit a little bit more open and loosely, but because it's these deep weight removal, we'll have a visual blend as that comes down. So you can see how much more weight and like airiness we have as, as I take a lot of this weight out with the razor here to kind of create that extreme shape. But then as that shakes out, it's not a hard disconnection that blends in really nice. Yeah. So I'll do that same on this side. So I'm coming through and cross-checking now. So I'm coming the opposite way to how I worked through. So I worked through by pivoting. So starting with horizontal, diagonal, 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 vertical, right? So I'm hitting every form of section. So usually when we cross-check, we check the opposite dimension. But when you use all of the angles, that means you're crossing through all the dimensions, then I need to work this way. So I'm checking through and seeing what's happening on that nice line there. And it should match the roundness of what I've just done. If you think about how the hands on a clock tick around the head, obviously that's going to create more of a circular pattern to it. So now I'll just continue my sectioning into the back and work exactly the same thing. So we have a, um, a virtual class coming up in April and May. We've got uh, our virtual hands-on razor cutting and razor class with Kelly, which is on April 23rd. That's almost sold out. There's only a few places left. We're only allowing 20 people into these classes because it's virtual and it's hands-on. Uh, so we're gonna be watching you cut hair. You're gonna be watching us cut hair. You know, just like a hands-on class, but for those people that can't fly out to San Diego or they can't meet me where I'm gonna be or where Kelly's going to be, it just gives you an option to cut hair with us and get the uh, education that you're after. So if you're interested in taking that class, it's uh, on April 23rd, and you can sign up by following the link in my bio. And then I have a virtual class coming up on the 8th of May, 
and the 15th. It's a two-part class. Um, so it's eight hours in total, um, one Monday and the Monday after, and we'll be going through a lot of the shapes that I teach in my one-day Knowledge Destroys Fear class. And so those are, you know, some options for you guys. So again, I'm just pivoting around, making sure that I move with the haircut so that I don't put the hair in the wrong place. And all I'm looking for here is to pull the hair straight out from the head shape in this area. And there's my cutting line and I'm just following that. I'm working on the outside of my fingers so I can get that curvature. And I can lift the hair better when I work on the outside of the fingers versus if I work on the inside of my fingers. I'm gonna feel a lot of strain through here. Plus I'm gonna cut that quite flat. So this, I can have that curvature and really get the convex that I'm after. See, that's what I'm doing right now. I've got a convex through this area. But once I connect to this, it's going to turn into more of a concave. So I'm gonna keep those edges. So you can see the interior shape happening now, right? So that's where we're going to see that kind of lift and body and volume in that area and then flatter through here later. So again, the key thing is to make sure that your sections are clean, working off that pivot point. If you're not clean with your sectioning and you're not pivoting off of that point, that means you're moving around all over the place and you can expect to find little things in there. So I'm coming around on this top section here and heavily layering this. I'm pulling this straight up and then using that point of the fringe here to give as my guide as I'm gonna be going flatter on the top here, not so exaggerated this way. I'm going to use this section here for my exaggeration to connect into the length, but up here I want lots and lots of height and texture and volume. So pulling this straight up into the ceiling and then seeing where my guide's falling away and coming in underneath in a really big stroke. I want lots of space, lots of room for the hair to kind of flip and kick. So nice. Lots of ton of fun layers there. And then I clipped away these little sideburns because I was really liking how it was sitting on the head. So I can always address that later. I don't want to get too ahead of myself with the, with the haircut. So I tend to come back to sections, like put a pin in it and come back. So pulling this straight up and then checking and I'm pulling that to the right place and then coming in underneath really big, lots of short and long bits. Mm -hmm. Edgy. Cool. Yeah. So I've just finished that back quadrant. So I'm gonna come through and just give a little cross check, make sure that we're moving through consistently and clean. Pivoting is all about fluidity. So checking the opposite way. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing if I pulled each section straight out. So just skimming over that line if I see anything that's a little out of place. If I see something major, then that means I've completely missed the, the program. So I need to go back through the original way and make sure that those are connected in there. But you can see, just skimming over that nice and cleanly. And now I can do the other side. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I keep these separated so that I can always know where my pivot point is. Because as I start to move through this side, it'll disappear if I don't have it exposed through that side so working smart and not hard here the last thing i want to do is lose that pivot point can think of it like a clock the hands on the clock don't move off that pivot point they always stay on that spot so that's how you've got to be with this So there's my guide. I'm going to continue with the same positioning, working from fingertips to knuckle, and the fingertips being at the apex. So now, copying that through. 
ideally I'd love the mirror to be right in front of me so I could see what's going on with the over direction and the elevation in the haircut. how it's going to lay on the face, you know, and then we can play around with these pieces afterwards through here. But yeah, I'm starting to see the shape develop now. Yeah. Here's mine coming together. All these really, really short layers. So what I'm looking for now too on this top section that I just did is where is it looking really dense or dark or heavy? Because I want to have a lot of movement up here so we really need to take out a lot of weight so just kind of going through and finding where these really dense areas are and doing really extreme weight removal so looking for that bend in the hair to make sure i'm not cutting it too short so it sticks up but just really kind of helping and um the wave kind of go in a direction that i wanted to but listening to the hair where it wants to lay. So we can see how that's not so clunky chunky on the head there now, that blends in a lot better. And something like this for a client, it, it's, it's going to sit in this shape, no matter which, you know, how, how you wake up in the morning or what kind of hair texture you have with this, it's really gonna hold onto that shape because I'm removing so much. <laughs> Hopefully, and then, and then also when I do haircuts like this on people in the salon, they last a really long time because it is so much weight removal. So I do have, um, for me, I offer a complimentary like bang trim in between full haircuts because sometimes you don't need every single haircut on your head, maybe just a little bit of like density removal or a little bit of length to get it off the eyelashes. So something like that um, is a really good tool for me um, with my clients because it also gets the client on a regular basis coming into the salon, whether they're getting a full haircut or not. And then people are always like, wow, your hair always looks really good because they come in and get it cleaned up in between full cuts. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So now I'm gonna move into the back here and this haircut was already layered, but I wanna connect this point, this short point from the layers here into my sections that I clipped away and I wanna leave that length for now um, and probably do just more weight removal to blend it visually as opposed to technically blended. So I'm gonna take some inventory here and see what kind of. I like that word. Just taking inventory, having a look, see what you've already got. Yeah. And where it's falling, if it's doing what you need before you move on. Totally. Taking that minute just to really analyze what we're doing before chopping stuff off, right? Yeah. Because that's the worst. You can always go back and do more. Yep. I always say it's not a mistake to leave it longer. The mistake is when you go too short, you know? So leaving bits and feeling them around for a little bit and then going for it sometimes is a safer option, isn't it? Yeah. So what I'm seeing here, so this length at the bottom of the layers, that's already kind of cascading nicely into the length. So what we just need to do is connect this point into that length that we had. So I'm just going to really dramatically, there's my guy that's popping away into that length. So just taking that little bit off now, that'll create that visual blend all the way through the haircut there. So I'm on the last quadrant now in the back. So pivoted all the way around from front to back off the apex. So you can see utilizing the curvature of the fingers to help by cutting this shape in there so working with it somebody's at the door so again it's very simple and that's the whole point is to simplify these things 
not to embellish, not to add, but to, to subtract elements of it. from that point, the last few sections, before I go into the underneath. Any questions? Mm -mm. No? Good. Nice and clear and concise. Mm. That's good. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Banging down the door. Checking that all the way around. And I'm sorry, I'll come over the head to finish the rest of it. See a little bit of length down there. Just match that. coming around in these quadrants here and then just working off that center point and pivoting around here. So coming in underneath, just that little bit of connection right there. And these little bits can make a huge difference. Yeah, that looks good. So same thing, just gonna pivot over into this triangle section here and bringing that around. Um, I'm excited about the, the virtual razor class. I think it's a really good um, opportunity to learn the tool and the safety of your own home um, on a doll head as well. So if you're looking to like entry level, like just starting to pick up the razor, um, or even if you are extremely experienced in using the razor, it's just fun to play around and try different things. We'll go through a bunch of haircuts during the day, during the class, so you'll really be able to get a good sense of um, how you can utilize the tool moving forward in, in the salon. Blend, blend, blend. my sections organized as I go through here. Pulling that up to the ceiling. Blending out into the length. So there's the, the, the top and here's the underneath. So what I'm going to do now is coming from this front hairline, so we don't have any hair here, so I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start right here where that hairline is. I'm going to take vertical sections now around the head and I'm going to use that interior as the guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up and away from that. And as I cut, I'm going to move. So it starts to leave me longer pieces but obviously not as heavy, not as disconnected. So lift up to that point, and then as I cut, I'm lifting up and over. So obviously a lot softer through these edges with that connection, not as blunt and as strong. So the strength is on the inside and the softness is on the edges. I 
I could have dried this and connected it when it's dry, but I would probably have had to straighten the hair to do that. So I'm looking to work with the mannequin's texture. So I'm working the connection when it's wet. And I will have a visual look later. Once it's done. So I'm doing my, my last kind of visual look through here to see what needs some guidance and, and direction a little bit. I'm liking how this side is waving in. So I want to enhance that. So I'm going to go in and create a pocket for it to sit. Just little V's. So then now that kind of pops out a little bit more. It has that place to kind of clump together. So do the same on this side. Here, here, same, not this piece, not you. <laughs> this one. In there, so we get that little bit. How that sits out just that little bit more and opens up that face shape. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm loving all this height here. A little more of an edgier exaggerated shag mullet vibe you know you can tuck this behind the ears and it's like super super mullety which is really cool but because we have this these v sections it's all going to be nice and head hugging so i'll put a little bit of product in that and then let that air dry and i'll, I'll post it on my um my instagram so you can see what the finished look is but nice and head hugging and then nice and flat here i'll give you a little profile view would you uh would you dry that with the dryer or you just let it do its thing? If in salon, I would probably air it, like uh, diffuse it yeah. with a client so that they don't leave with wet hair because that's like my least favorite thing in the entire world. <laughs> Having Adults shouldn't be walking around with wet hair like that. Um, but I, for this, the way that it's sitting, I'm just going to let it air dry. Um, if I was to diffuse it, what I would do is put the product in and then I would hit the roots with high airflow and cold, like no heat completely cold just to lock these roots in place and to make sure they get really dry. It also helps to create a bit of a cast by closing that cuticle layer a little bit to prevent a lot of the frizziness. Um, and then I would hit the ends with a low airflow, high heat just to evaporate the rest of the uh, moisture away as, a, as opposed to pushing it because when you're diffusing, you don't want to move it much. I really want this, this to sit in its natural state. So I'm going to let this sit, um, it should dry pretty quickly because I took out all of its hair. We had a couple questions. Oh, yeah. Um, what kind of razor do you use? Oh, sure. I use the, um, the Feather Plie. You can, um, we find these. You can get them on hairbrain.pro. Yeah. Um, and then they also, um, the blades, let me grab, show you the box of blades. Or they come, you can get them on um, Amazon. I just have a, like a sub subscription to Amazon. So I get one at like, get a box every, can you see? Oh, there we go. Focused. Um, and then it, 20 come in a pack. And then it has a little compartment for your discarded razors as well. So I believe the handle's around 120, maybe 100 bucks. And then the box of uh, blades that comes with 20 is around $23. Um, yeah. And then can you go through your sectioning again? Of course. Um, so I started out finding my um, fringe area by laying the comb flat on the head. And then right where that comb dips down is where I section that out for the fringe into the top of the ear. Right at the top of that recession. Let me see if I can find it. Right here. So this was my fringe section. This is the piece that I left disconnected. Um, and then I laid my comb on the head again. And from where it dips down in the back here on the crown, I did a like pie shaped section 
here. That was clipped away. And then, um, I can show you here. And then parted down the center in the back, laid the comb flat here where the occipital bone comes out, and then made another pie shaped section for here. Like that. Ooh, yeah. What product do you use in it? I um I don't think this has product in it right now. Oh. What would you use? I what are you? Think, what am I going to use? Let me take a look at our wall over here. I think I want to try this multi-use mousse. Bum, 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 bum. Mm hmm <gasps> Woo! It smells good. So I'm just going to kind of rake this through here. I want to have just that, show off that separation a little bit and then really kind of enhance those tendrils. I like to put extra product on, on the top of my hand here when I'm doing it. That way, as I'm going through, if I need to like grab some more, it's already there on my hand and that I'm not oversaturating it. I'm in control of where I'm placing the product and how much product is going into the hair. Also having some of that product on the top of the hands here helps when you're raking it through. Um, just so that it doesn't, none of it gets nice. Look at that rocker. She looks like Joe Dirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so versatile. Good for the old David Spade. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. True mullet. Okay. So then I'm just going to reshape that out and kind of place it to where we want it. That just shows, too, that like all of those old school styles, it's, it's so much about styling and which way you're wearing the hair and how you're doing it. You hit this with a round brush, a little bit of curling iron, and you look like, uh, you know, a church lady. A really <laughs> nice wet set. With the old Dana Carvey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of scrunching that in. Good. Yeah. Very nice. So I kind of just kind of went through a couple of times having a look at my connection. Uh, if you think about it, it's I'm just whittling the hair down. It's like woodwork in a sense to what I want it to, to be like, to what I want to see. that's the length. So I'm working to the length every time I work through. I could use the razor for this as well. It's a great tool for using, you know, to get from short to long very quickly and, and get that separated look. So you can see that massive concave in there. When you look at this, and then that projection out to a much longer length from that interior. So it keeps these tendricles, keeps our length, but makes the interior super lean. When I was a younger hairdresser, this always had that David Bowie feeling, that kind of glam rock, mid, uh, early to mid, late 70s kind of feeling with all those like Bay City Rollers, yes. Sweet, yes. all those bands. So now that that's in there, I'm gonna put some product in. And then I can start to let it do its thing and then visually start to work the shape. I'm going with the same one. The whip it, is it the Whip It Good or did no, you use the guy? I use that. I'm going to use the Whip It Good. Ooh. Someone asked what products we're using. We are using Evo, Evo. products. Thank you, Evo, for providing products for us Thank this you, weekend Evo. at the show. Uh, we're going to use all of them in our classes now. So just running it through, just like normal. Getting the hands in there, giving it the old Joe dirt. <laughs> but they're the same. <laughs> the good old That's the whole point, snakes is and the, sparklers. Is yeah. to show the uh, use of scissors and razors and how we can do very similar shapes. They look like you know, dirt bike girlfriends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to let that do its thing as well. I'll probably hit it with a bit of a diffuser to kind of speed up the process and that. 
But then once all that's done, it's going to be so much more visual. I'm going to be coming through and whittling through, slicing through the shape, especially into these areas. I don't want to do that when it's dry. I want to do that when it's dry, uh, when it's dry skin. I don't want to do it when it's wet. I want to do it when it's, I can see what's going on with it. 